Good evening, I'm Lori Matsukawa. Events in China this week have fanned emotions across the world. She's been a trusted presence on King 5 since the early 1980s. Governor Locke capped off the day. With She's told us what's happening at home. We begin tonight with the latest on the investigation into the Horizon jet stolen from SeaTac Airport. And far from home. Doing business in Shanghai isn't easy. Lori Matsukawa has been a part of our lives. Oh my goodness. And has taken us to new heights. What I do for King 5, I tell you. Having fun along the way. Oh, we're going, we're going, we're going to the Hookie Lao. Tonight, a look back at her impressive career. I was blessed to be able to work with her for such a long time. When I turned to my left, there was Mox. You know, what a lucky anchor boy was I. And we have been lucky too. Bye. Let's celebrate Lori Matsukawa. Here's your host, Mark Wright. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. After more than three decades at King 5, 36 years to be exact, my friend and colleague Lori Matsukawa is retiring. Tonight we are here to showcase Lori's career and celebrate all of her accomplishments as she begins a new chapter in life. And Lori, it's hard to believe it's your last day. It's hard to believe. You, you know it's coming, but then when it's here, you go, oh my goodness, it's here. It's here. Um, I have to say one thing. If you opened up the Seattle Times today, it's not often that when somebody retires, they have a front page story. And it's quite a write-up, Lori, talking about your career and your accomplishments. It was just such a thrill to be able to share all the adventures that I had, or some of the adventures that I had here at King 5. And I do want to do a shout out to my former fifth grade PE teacher, Jerry Tanoe. Thank you for the beautiful flower lay. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. We're going to talk a lot more about your heritage. You're growing up in Hawaii in a little bit. Right now, we want to ask for your memories and messages about Lori's retirement. You can text us at 206-448-4545. We'll continue to share those comments throughout the next hour. We begin tonight with an overview of Lori's life story and how she got into the broadcast business. It's a remarkable road that all began in Hawaii. Lori grew up in Hawaii, a childhood filled with sunshine and smiles. Lori Matakawa, Honolulu, Hawaii. Her senior year of high school, Lori won the Miss Teenage America pageant. I mean, you travel to every city. You're interviewed by newspaper reporters, radio, television reporters. I began to think, hey, this is a job I could do. While at Stanford University, Lori interned at KPIX-TV in San Francisco, starting to learn the business. For Channel 5 Eyewitness News, this is Lori Matsukawa. She got her first television job in Redding, California. Good evening, a Butte County prisoner is back behind bars. Then it was on to KPTV in Portland. In 1980, she landed in Seattle at Como TV, just in time to report about the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Wake Up with Lori Matsukawa and Tony Ventrella. Lori co-anchored Como's first morning newscast with Tony Ventrella. And in 1983, she made the switch to King 5, reporting for Top Story. She covered all kinds of events and discovered the beauty of Washington State and its people. Her co-anchor was Mike James. I thought it was a, it was a great period and, and I thought we were a great pair. I've worked with, I've been lucky to work with four uh, co-anchors and I'd put uh, Lori right at the top of that. She was just great. Alan Schaffler anchored a number of shows with Lori over the years. I mean in 20 plus years at King TV most of the time when I turned to my left there was Mott's. You know what a lucky anchor boy was I. Uh, it was amazing because she's a total pro, absolutely committed to the product, a ton of fun. Well, it was a very Lori traveled extensively, covering the 50th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Now they're demanding some of the benefits of their hard work. To Japan to feature Washington State exports. This used to be just a little creek that ran under this bridge. To Honduras with photographer Ken Jones to report about earthquake relief. And there was presidential politics in Iowa. But perhaps it was more successful serving as a highway. What? In China, she showed us Governor Gary Locke's trade mission, where he was treated like a rock star. <laughs> Lori carried the Olympic torch, reporting from Salt Lake City and Vancouver, B.C. 
and she reported extensively about the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II and their fight for redress in the decades that followed. They knew that Lori kind of had their back and would be sure that issues that were important to Japanese Americans were highlighted and spotlighted. And, you know, she brought diversity to the anchor desk at a time when there was very little. And she got to meet and greet a lot of people just about every day. Lori also takes pride in supporting the next generation of journalists through the Asian American Journalists Association. Lori Matsukawa has mentored generations of journalists of color, students and mid-career professionals uh, here in the Northwest and uh, across the nation, really. Um, and not only that, I think you look at Lori's body of work and her decades of covering the stories of our communities uh, is remarkable. She also served as First Lady of Grace United Methodist Church for seven years. And then there's the fun Lori that's just a blast. Watch King 5 News at 11. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to tell you, Lori is genuine, a class act and a role model. Husband Larry Blackstock. If you want to know what she's like when she's being funny or when she's prized or she's acting crazy, if you've seen the station, you know. Because that's exactly how she is at home. She doesn't become a different person or she doesn't become staged when she's on the air. In Beijing with the governor, Lori Getting Mastikawa. paid to go places, talk to people, and bring you the news. It's been great having Lori at King 5 for more than 36 years. And thank goodness you chose to stay here at King 5. I don't think there's any doubt you could have gone to the network if you wanted to. How come you stayed here? At the time that I did get a network offer, I had a young son who was just thriving in elementary school. Larry was having a terrific career at Northwest Cable News as its director of operations. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't transplant this wonderful family into L.A. Sorry, Angelinos, but I just couldn't. They were having just such a wonderful life. So I said, you know what, I'm going to stay here. And guess what? After I made the decision to stay, King 5 sent me to cover the Iowa caucuses, mm -hmm. the, the you know, New Hampshire primaries. They sent me to the Honduras. They sent me to Japan and China. Yeah. It was crazy. I was a network correspondent. So the big impact, one of the big impacts you had in the community is your work at uh, Grace United Methodist Church in Seattle. Um, a lot of things that you did there, no one ever knew about at home. Um, just caring for people, loving people, serving people. Well, it's wonderful. When, when Larry became the pastor there, the pastor's wife becomes called, is called the First Lady, and yeah. I just loved bringing flowers every Sunday, setting up the coffee, and making, and you know, having the kids be involved, playing music with them, putting on the, the Christmas play. It was just a wonderful environment to share and be happy and make a, create a family. Yeah. It was just wonderful. So, Lori, we have two special guests here tonight, former King 5 anchor Dennis Bounds and former Chief Meteorologist Jeff Renner. Way. This one just making their way into the studio oh right no now. Way. They both worked with Lori through the years. I'm sure they have a lot of stories and oh, memories to give share. Give me some sugar. Jeff, oh my God. Dennis, great to see you guys. No problem. Thanks Let for being me here. Just congratulations. Oh, thank I'll you. Oh, in a moment. Look yeah. at that. So good to share this with you. This is amazing. Thanks. This I'm is a, like the team right here. This is like here. the team for so many years. I'm glad you guys dressed up for the occasion. Good job. We were well, ordered to have to talk to us about that. <laughs> so Dennis, you sent in a picture and we want to throw that up here. Let's share that with everybody. So tell us a little bit more about this picture and the memories. Well, this is have. one of my favorite pictures. This is when we first moved to the studios here, and little did Jeff or I know that uh, we would not be here but for another couple of months. That's right. Uh, our retirements were impending, but I just love that one particular shot, and Lori is the star of the picture, and after we left, she stayed the star of the show. Oh, that's fantastic. Jeff, give, give us an idea of what it was like to work with Lori for all those years. She had an amazing eye and ear for details. I could give you some information about a science story, the weather, and you'd repeat those almost verbatim. And I had a very good example of that. A friend of mine went with his wife to Venice, uh, Italy. They were on the street. Somebody told them, the best way to have a good time is simply get lost. And when it's time to go back to your hotel, just look for somebody and they'll give you directions. So they were just at that point, and they said this very well-dressed lady with dark glasses and a hat came up to them and said, you look like you're lost. Can I give you directions? They said what followed 
was almost GPS accurate directions. <laughs> Turn here, go two blocks, take another. And they got ready to walk away and the husband said to the wife, she sounded really familiar. <laughs> and the wife said, do you know who that was? It was Lori Matsukawa what? from King yeah. TV in Seattle. <laughs> she Isn't really cannot nutty? go anywhere in the world and not be recognized, right? And, and without we, looking for a way to help other people. And yeah. we I try think so key. hard. You know, just, Larry and I play a game, you know, who's going to recognize us now? <laughs> and yeah. we almost got away with it in Amsterdam. And all of a sudden, we're <laughs> eating dinner. And I said, we did it. We're going to be on the plane home tomorrow. And the guy next to us says, Aren't you Laurie Matsukawa from King <laughs> Five? Yeah, you interviewed my mother. I love it. I love it. Dennis, what about you? What memories do you have working with Laurie? Well, even before I started working with Laurie, you know, we had a little gathering last night, and Laurie, you talked about your mission as a journalist is to inform people. Mm -hmm. And I got to King Five. Uh, from Shreveport, Louisiana in 1991. I did the morning news. So on the weekends, I'd sit back and watch the 11 o'clock news. And I didn't know you from Adam at that point. We had not really met. And I saw Laura in the air, and you had a presence about you, the way you handled yourself, the way you presented the, the news. There's an authority that you have in front of the camera, also a comfort factor as well. And they both work well, and you, you were just so, it was so a joy to watch you do the news. And an even better joy to be able to sit next to you for, I don't know how many years. That was a lot of years. This, yeah. this team yeah. right here, is, that was so many years of, of nights and, you know, missed events and missed family uh, mm -hmm. occasions. But, yeah. boy, what a, what a group of real troopers. We, we did were. become essentially a secondary family. We were. Very yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. Very true. We have another King Five alum with a special message for Lori. So let's take a look. <laughs> so, Lori. Don't worry about retirement. You'll always find something to do. Right, Jeff? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that Ken. was longtime King 5 photographer Ken Jones. And Jeff, it looks like you're out doing some really serious field, field research I'm these days. I'm doing field research <laughs> out on crewing on that lovely sailboat uh, with uh, Grace. What about advice for Lori? You two have retired. You've yes, had please. a little time to settle in. What advice do you have? I would say just look for what really moves you, what excites you. And don't say yes too often too soon. That's really good advice. When you first step away, make sure you take time to really unwind and relax. And then decide which projects and offers you'll say yes to. And I, and I believe that you probably find a pretty good, you're going to find a happy medium. And you are still going to be in demand for many, many years to come. Just keep that in mind, too. Oh, my gosh. That's really good advice, because I think the public in general doesn't realize how stressful this occupation is, this job is. You're always against deadlines. Mm -hmm. You're always on demand. And even if it's your day off, mm -hmm. if news breaks, you have to be there. So. Well, since this is, this is our last opportunity, do you guys have any dirt on Lori that we need to know about? I will tell the one time, <laughs> the only time that I can remember that you were ever flustered, and it was just for a second. I was doing a broadcast in a small aerobatic biplane up at Payne Field, and I said to the pilot, we were transmitting across to Sky King, I said, can you roll inverted? And so he did. And we came on the monitor, and I could see Lori looking, am I upside down? Is he upside down? Is the monitor upside down? But that only lasted for a second or two. You, with your normal aplomb, just reacted and said, all right, Jeff, what are you up to now? Scared me to death. That's, that's amazing. We know Lori is really focused on things. And yeah. It happened uh, just occasionally, not often. And Lori, you could uh, rebut this argument. But occasionally, I'd go out, make sure I was on the set for the headlines at the, mm -hmm. uh, for the nightly news. And sometimes Lori would not be there. I'm going, where's Lori? And it would be 30 seconds, 10 seconds, take it by yourself, and I would start the headlines. And I could hear in the old studio, Lori, running down the hall <laughs> 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 and trying not to look like I'm huffing and puffing. But no oh. one, no one ever knew un until now. Uh, Dennis, yes. Jeff, I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much. Our pleasure to be a part of this. Yeah. This is great. Thanks for being here. So we're asking you guys at home to send in your messages on social media. Let's check in with Michelle Lee, tracking the well wishes. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Okay. So I just think people's heads are exploding. They're so excited because we see. I will miss you miss Lori just like so many of your peers like Jean, Dennis and Jeff to mention a few mahalo Jamie in Marysville and of course these are texts that are coming in I do want to show some about retirement because we were looking at some advice congratulations on your upcoming retirement it is an awesome life I retired from WSP as an IT person back in 2012 it is so nice to do the things you want to do that you couldn't do before as you had to be there at work no matter how 
how much you love your job. So have fun. Um, another one, enjoy retirement, Laura. You're gonna love it. Thanks for the memories over the years. We love you, Joanne from Blaine. Let me try to pick some other ones out here that I thought were really great. Um, I just like the ones that people are sharing about how you've inspired them. So Laura, you are truly an inspiration to all of us. I have watched you for 36 years. You are a beautiful person inside and out. You truly are a class act. So that was from Debbie and Graham. But um, a lot of texts coming in for you. <laughs> Thanks, right. Michelle. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Michelle. Thanks, folks. So last night we had a big celebration for Lori here at King 5, honoring her work. Faces from King 5's past and present were all there wishing Lori well in her retirement. It was really great last night, Lori, seeing all your colleagues come together. And seeing everyone together last night really reminded me that we are here and we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. And we owe you, Lori, a huge debt to the work that you've done, which is now the foundation for all of those who will come from here on. You know, you mentioned standing on the shoulders, and there is a Japanese phrase called okage-sama de, which means I am who I am because of you. Hmm. And it speaks to that idea of standing on the shoulders of those who came before. And so I'm standing on the shoulders of those who came before, Mrs. Bullitt and all of the people hmm. in her family who made this King 5 station the thing it is, the legacy station it is. and. Hopefully, we'll have a new generation coming up next. Well, we have a lot more on the way tonight. Stay tuned, including some special guest surprises. But first, a look at the lighter side of Lori. Oh, we're going to the Hookie Lao. Hookie, 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 Lao. Everybody loves a Hookie Lao. So Lori may have left Hawaii years ago, but she is still a natural at this. Teaching our Take 5 crew how to dance. We'll be back with much more after this. So, Lori, I wish you absolutely the best. And I've got to tell you, the best is yet to come. This retirement stuff, well, like me, you'll probably be a failure at retiring. And you go on to do something even more fun than what you're doing now. But, you know, I've always been so impressed. You're ready. You just get up in the morning, and you're ready. And you work late at night, and you're ready. I remember when you were pregnant, and here's little Alex in your tummy, and you're running up the stairs and down the stairs and all around the station. and you show up like it's nothing, but it's something because you were one of the first anchor people on the air to have a baby while you're working and be an example for other women. You're an example for a lot of us, Lori, about a real commitment to the community and a really hardworking, highly respected person. I hope you enjoy retirement, and I know all of your loyal viewers are really going to miss you.
Whitlock capped off the day with a celebratory reception honoring all the Washington State businesses. In Beijing, in Chengdu, China, in Shanghai, in Hong Kong, in Geelong Village, China, Lori Matsukawa, King 5 News. The year was 1997. Lori and photographer Dave Wyke reported on Governor Gary Locke's historic visit to China. For more than a week, Lori and Dave worked morning, noon, and night, and there was no time to rest. I'm sure we were jet lagged, it was hot out, um, and we were chasing the governor up and down the Great Wall. And I was just so euphoric and, and, and so excited uh, to be on the Great Wall that I was probably running too fast and walking too fast and Lori was having a hard time catching up. And so we sit down on the, on the stone of the Great Wall of China and we're huffing and puffing and I just look over and she is out and heading backwards. <laughs> So Lori almost fell off the Great Wall of China. Thankfully, Dave caught you before you fell. That was a big trip for both you and the governor, wasn't it? It really was. It was his first visit to his ancestral village, as well as meeting the president of China, Jiang wow. Zemin. And Dave and I had a heck of a time keeping up with that schedule because he must have visited seven or eight cities in that one trip. And so while he was doing stuff during the day, which mm -hmm. we covered, then we'd have to go back in the evenings and edit and write and then transmit wow. it back so by satellite. So like days, right? It was a long, That's long great. day. Some great work there. Well, Lori also has many connections in the community, including the Asian American Journalists Association. Let's take a look back at how that organization got started. The uh, Asian American Journalists Association, AAJA, was founded in 1981 in Los Angeles by uh, 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 Bill Singh, a business reporter for the LA Times, and uh, the legendary Trisha Toyota, KNBC. And they felt that um, this is an organization that should go national. The pair came to Seattle in 1985. They met with Lori, Frank Abe, and Ron Chu at a coffee shop in Capitol Hill. And there, the Seattle chapter was formed, Lori serving as co-president. Lori immediately uh, grasped the, uh, the, the idea of creating an organization that would uh, accomplish two goals uh, and both having to do with representation. Uh, one was to get more journalists of color into the industry and the other was uh, to better represent our communities on the air and in print. The founder of Northwest Asian Weekly, Asunta Ng, says at the time it was greatly needed. When it comes to crisis or tough situations, I think we need an organization that can help us to address uh, common issues uh, like gender issues or racial issues, things like that. Over the years, Lori advised Seattle chapter presidents like Sharon Chan. She sees the spark in the students and then she adds kindling through personal mentoring, through one-on-one -on -one conversations to help them get to that first job and to the next job. Well, we've got to prime the pump. We have to get young people into college. We've got to get them interested in journalism. To get students into college, the association joined forces with other minority journalist organizations to form a coalition called the Northwest Journalists of Color. For nearly 30 years, it has given more than $150,000 in scholarships to high school students. I also think there are many Asian Americans who would not be journalists now on TV if it were not for Lori her mentoring and her belief and confidence in them at a time when they didn't even believe in themselves gave them the confidence to pursue this career. And joining us now is Corinne Chin, the current president of the Asian American Journalists Association, Seattle chapter. Corinne, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much Thanks for, for having coming. me. So this is a really important organization. Tell us why it's so important and, and how much has been done in the years since Lori helped found it here. Well, so much has happened and AAJA's mission is now fourfold, whereas it used to really just be about promoting Asian Americans in the journalism industry. Now, not only are we working on getting them into the industry, where we're working with students, who Lori still works with to this day, uh, to getting them in the industry, but also promoting uh, Asian Americans into leadership positions within the industry and retaining them, as well as an external mission. You know, we try to have fair and accurate representation of the Asian American Pacific Islander community in the media, and we also try to have more media literacy and awareness for the AAPI community in general. Well, so Lori also encouraged King 5 Morning News anchor Mimi Jung to become an AAJA, uh, Seattle chapter president. president. So let's take a look at this message from her. Thank you, Lori, for all that you have done to inspire Asian American journalists like myself. 
Growing up watching you on King 5 as a little girl, I remember seeing a news anchor who looked just like me, and that allowed me to believe that someday I could do the same. Thank you so much for all the contributions you have made to the Asian American Journalists Association, for the way that you've encouraged diversity in the newsroom, and for being so supportive to me when I was new to this industry. I will always be grateful that you encouraged and challenged me to become president of Seattle's chapter of AAJA. I was able to lead and learn and in a very small way, follow in your footsteps. Thank you for being a mentor, a friend, a role model, an incredible mother who I looked up to as I became a parent myself. Our newsroom will not be the same without you, Lori. I sit near Lori in the newsroom and I can't count the number of times I've heard you mentoring young people on the phone. I don't know if you know that we heard. Nowadays we can do it on it's FaceTime. It's amazing, yeah. Right? It's just amazing. It's just wonderful. How much work have we done on the topic of racism and discrimination and how, how much work do we have left? It's getting much, much better. Over time I've noticed that there is a conscious and uh, deliberate decision that we are going to cover all the communities and even people who are older, people who are younger, communities that don't often have a voice. So it's not just ethnic communities yeah. at all. And I, I just have to laugh when I hear Mimi saying, thank you for involving me in AAJA because as Corinne knows, one of the first things I do when I see anyone new in the newsroom is pigeonhole them and say, hey, are you in AAJA? Do you want to be president? <laughs> It's like, don't go near that lorry. She's going to draft you into it. AAJ. <laughs> and the work continues. It so, does. Corinne, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. So, Lori has also reported extensively about the incarceration of Japanese Americans during the Second World War. That's coming up next. Lori, congratulations on your retirement. It is so well deserved. I got a chance to sit next to you at King and just try to absorb as much as I possibly could from you. You were a mentor, you were a friend, uh, and you just welcomed me with open arms to the King family. Congratulations, enjoy it. You deserve the break.
Oh my goodness. 40 years in the industry, first Emmy. Yeah. Believe! <laughs> Believe! That was like Lori's Oprah moment last year, <laughs> winning an Emmy for the first time. She received a standing ovation and lots of cheers from her peers in the industry. So, Lori, you won that <laughs> award for your work on Prisoners in Their Own Land, uh, a, a, a story about the internment of Japanese Americans. What an honor and what a capstone to your career. It was something that I really wanted to do was leave a legacy, if you will, a, a solid piece of work that people could refer to so that any time they had a question about what happened and what happened after incarceration and what were the conflicts between families and how did redress happen and how is it told, how is the story being retold today? I wanted something there and that was it. And it was a very complicated story that took a lot of time to explain all the factors, all the elements. Yep. Dave Bike and I worked on it for a year. That's amazing. So they spent years documenting the internment of Japanese Americans. So here's a look at some of Lori's work. We were fenced in. We lost our freedom emotionally and physically. They were people of Japanese ancestry. Mothers and fathers, students, farmers and business owners, locked up for years by their own government. Their only crime, they looked like the enemy. With a stroke of a pen, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt sent more than 110,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry into American concentration camps during World War II. Many of those uprooted from Western Washington ended up here in Minidoka, Idaho. The biggest part about what she did in that series is she related it to personal stories. And so it wasn't just history. It wasn't saying 120,000 people were taken from their homes. It was going and talking to people who were taken from their homes. And this is where the guard, the guard tower was, right here. You could feel the impact. You can feel the hurt. You can feel the indignation. You could see the wrongness of what happened. How could I possibly conform to somebody saying, let's prove that you're a loyal American. My word, I've been a loyal American. Her decades of covering the stories of our communities uh, is remarkable. All the archival sound bites in her series are, are from stories that Lori did herself in the uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, you see a young Lori Matsukawa on the steps of the federal courthouse in Seattle interviewing Gordon Hirabayashi when he was uh, going to court to get his wartime convictions vacated for violating military curfew. That just shows you the, the depth of Lori's uh, commitment. America's a great country, but it still makes mistakes. Line up straight in the line. Ready. It wasn't an internment camp. It was an American concentration camp. Present arms. America is awesome but it does make errors. I think Laura did just a fantastic service to our community and to our country and, and being able to portray these stories. It shouldn't happen again in America. And joining us now is Tom Ikeda of Densho, which is a Japanese term that means pass it on to the next generation. Tom, it's good to have you here. Thank you, Mark. You had a thought that you wanted to share off the top here. Well, I was thinking uh, today about when Lori came to Seattle as a, as a young journalist, and you came at such an exciting time in Japanese American, as well as American history. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a time when the Japanese American community was just starting to gain its voice in sharing what happened during World War II and beginning to organize itself so that it could actually go to the government and ask for an apology. And so this was a very exciting time for the community. Lori had you know, just come to Seattle, and so she was on the ground documenting this. And you know, I just saw the picture. You right. were talking to happening. Gordon Hirabayashi and these historical figures. Right, it was happening every day. We were covering it on a daily basis, right? They call it the first draft of history, and it was just part of our daily reporting. Well, and Tom, your father-in-law was in that piece there. Yes, he was. Yeah. And, and after the success of the redress movement, you know, we then shifted to memorializing uh, the story. And you know, that's when you know, Densho started. Um, our mission was to preserve the stories. And so we started collecting them. You know, we watched Lori and all the interviews you did. And then I think you really capped it with your documentary, you know, Prisoners in Their Own Land. 
I mean, it was such a, a great opportunity to really tell the story from the Japanese American perspective. Because you had grown up with the story so much, you knew the people. Mm -hmm. And like me, I'm sure it was hard to see so many of them pass on. Exactly. I was going on. to say, Densho's work was very valuable because they did video interviews with so many of these individuals. And now many of them are no longer with us. And so that's part of the value of journalism and documenting all of the history that happens because they're not here with us anymore. Watching your work on this topic, when I have experienced it over the years, it made me realize what a nightmare that was for Japanese Americans and that we, sh we need to never, ever, ever forget. Yeah. And as we deal with these difficult um, you know, stories, yeah, I, I think we're so fortunate to have um, Lori in our community because you brought such a aloha spirit in terms of your generosity, sense of community, so that as we went through this, um, it really helped to have people like you lead us to go through that. So, so thank you so much, Lori. Oh, thank you, Tom. Tom, Thanks to Densho. It's great too. to have you be here. Thank you. Thank you. So, something else that's been near to my heart has been the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Washington. So, you actually helped co found the J in 2003. The Cultural Center is uh, in the century old Japanese language school here in Seattle. And before the language school became the Cultural Center, it served as the Hunt Hotel for Japanese American families after they left those internment camps. For current president, Kurt Tokita, the center is a part of his family history. A lot of places did not take Japanese uh, or want Japanese renters. Um, this is uh, my great-grandfather Suzuki, which um, I just found out a couple years ago when I was doing an interview with my dad. I had no idea. Now the center has a rotating museum, a dojo, and one of the largest libraries in North America. Lori has served as co-president and currently serves as secretary. All right, let's go back to Michelle Lee, who's monitoring all the farewells coming in on social media. Michelle. Oh my goodness, we're getting so many great messages. I want to share this one, though, first, because, Lori, do you remember this? I was one of your nurses when you had your son. When I discharged you, I told you you needed to take care of yourself because you were a celebrity. You might not get the privacy you needed, but you stated it wouldn't be a problem as you were not a celebrity. <laughs> you are a celebrity, but you're very humble, so I love that about you. Um, Lori did a story about my uncle. Kenji Yaguchi, a w, uh, World War II veteran, I wrote her a note of thanks telling her I would see it after I returned from overseas, but shortly thereafter I got a video copy in the mail. Wow! <laughs> That's wonderful. And then there are a couple of others that I loved. This one, why am I tearing up about someone's retirement who I never met? Because Lori has been a part of my daily life since I moved here in 1994. Such professionalism, such class. Thank you so much, Lori. You have given this community so much and i hope i have time for one more this one i like this one we honor treasure and cherish all of lori matsukawa all, all lori matsukawa has done throughout her career and educated our family children elders communities etc she's a true role model to us women and all ethnic groups i'm a stronger powerful native woman because of her so Thank you very much, Lori, and thank you at home for keeping these texts going because we have so many countless texts coming in about you, Lori. And I really appreciate all of them, and I appreciate the cards, the letters, the phone calls. It's just been a terrific week. Just Every amazing. one of those is so well-deserved. And even the lady at the QFC this morning. <laughs> They're just so wonderful. Everyone is just so happy for my retirement. Thank you. Okay, we're going to lighten things up a little bit now, Lori. Okay. Are you ready for this? Lori's hair through the years, her role in the Office Olympics, and why we call her the documentarian. That's coming up next. Lori, I don't know how you're dealing with this because I can't remember anywhere near back that far, <laughs> but probably we need to forget those uh, way back when. Congratulations on an incredible run. Uh, everybody's learned to love you and find out that they can count on you every night. Uh, it's great that, that you've been around and sorry that you're gonna step away, but you're gonna probably do something really cool. That's what I plan on doing. I ain't ever finished it. <laughs> I hope you don't either. Bye.
One of Lori's favorite moments in her career was riding with the Thunderbirds in 1999. Take a look. There she is in the cockpit of an F-16 fighter jet pulling nine G's, and you did not get sick. Did not get sick. <laughs> That's the important part. So it's also important to know that this woman has an amazing sense of humor and is just a blast to work with. Well, it looks like our friends at Evening put together something, and it's supposedly very funny. Let's see what they came up with. Hey everybody, Team Evening here with congratulations to our pal Lori Matsukawa on her retirement. I remember as a young Buck sportscaster, I was very nervous on the set for one of the first times and sitting next to Lori as she tossed him for the sportscast, I felt a sense of calm, security, comfort. Lori is as nice and thoughtful in real life as she appears on TV. Yeah, in all my years here, I have never seen her in person not smiling. <laughs> You know what else is true? She has had some amazing hairstyles over the past 36 yeah. years. When I first came, Lori's hair was kind of longer, and I thought that was great. I enjoyed watching it as it transformed, you know, along the way. And I think the whole short thing going on now is just really great. She looks good. Yeah, her hair always does look good, but yes. we kind of felt bad once. We were kind of maybe going over the edge, and we put a helmet on her. Yeah, yeah but that necessary. was for a good cause. Yeah. That was all part of the Office Olympics. It was an event called the Lori Bobsikawa. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Lori Bobsikawa. Sorry about the hair. Have fun anchoring. She was such a good sport, really letting was. us do that with her. Yeah, and just one of many fun Lori Matsukawa moments around the office. So Lori hosted my baby shower when I was pregnant with my daughter. And one of the games was that we had to sniff dirty diapers and guess what was inside. So all these women are, you know, face deep into dirty diapers. It was chocolate, by the way, not the real thing. <laughs> Lori's short. I'm tall. And so uh, the, the studio crew fashioned a small, I think we call it a half apple crate, for her to stand on. And it worked. And from that point on, we called that little crate the Mott's Box. <laughs> So farewell, Lori. We are definitely going to miss you. Yes. Yep. We'll miss you. Happy retirement. Bye, Lori. Oh, thank you, Team Evening. You know, we also consider Lori our documentarian here at King 5. Here's why. Anytime we had a farewell for a fellow coworker, Lori was front and center with her smartphone, snapping pics, recording video, feeding social media. Lori, you must have quite an archive. I do, and now. I love sharing it on social media, especially the singing. You know, we, we really like to celebrate people here at King 5. And when people sing, that's very special. And another thing you need to know about Lori, she never really was on vacation. Um, this is what she did while on vacation in Hawaii. Took technology that she had in her purse, her smartphone. Uh, she heard farmers were going to ship avocados to Washington State from Hawaii for the first time in 25 years. So she grabbed her smartphone, found a source, put a story together for the 11 o'clock news that night, all in a day's work. And that says a lot about your commitment. Absolutely. To adore Wherever there was a story. Right? <laughs> Gotta do it. So we have another King 5 News anchor here to talk about the time through the years with Lori. Let's welcome Joyce Taylor to the set. And Joyce, not only Joyce. do you have a ton of memories collaborating with Lori, but you have some big shoes to fill because starting on Monday, you guys, Joyce and I will be anchoring the news right. while Lori is playing or doing whatever you're going to be I'll doing. I'll be retired. Yeah. And I'll do my best. <laughs> you know, uh, you said something to me about a week and a half ago. You said, enjoy your life, enjoy your career because you only go around once. And that's what you have done. And I've watched you, you've been such an incredible role model to all of us in the newsroom. But I think particularly to young people and young people of color, to, for them to be able to see themselves reflected mm -hmm. in the media, to know that they can do it too, and to have done it with such grace and gratitude as you have done. Well, thank you. It's been a gift to us all. So it really has been. In the 1970s, Jean Anderson, of course, broke into what was a male-dominated profession. And both of you have brought diversity to the anchor desk. What was it like, Lori, when you first started back then? And how have things changed in the meantime? At the time, there weren't that many Asian-American journalists on TV. And so there was Connie Chung and there was Ken Kashiwahara, and that was about it. And so I said, let's, let's 
do this. Let's show up every night, be on the anchor desk, you know, be that role model so that someone will come in your footsteps, mm -hmm. walk in your footsteps and join join the whole industry. Well, I have That's to say, I have learned from both of you. I've worked extensively with Joyce on The Morning Show, but both of you have helped me understand race issues and cultural issues in a way that I never would have without working with both of you. And that, that tradition will continue with Joyce on Monday here. Mm -hmm. So thanks to you both. Yeah. It's an honor to be stepping into your chair. It's going to be great. Enjoy your retirement. <laughs> I will. I may be calling on you, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so Lori has a message for everybody coming up. But first, the premiere of our new Stand for Truth commercial with these two. Take a look. When you got your first television job, did you see people on TV who looked like you? There were just two people that I saw, Ken Kashiwahara and Connie Chung. And so I said, oh, it's possible to be an Asian American journalist. We really need to have journalists of color to represent our viewers. We still need to show up and inspire people and have them say, hey, look, there's someone that looks like me on TV. I can do that job. Welcome back. You're looking live inside Henry's Tavern, right across the street from our studios here in Soto. That's a viewing party underway, watching tonight's celebration of King 5 News anchor Lori Matsukawa, who is retiring tonight. So these folks are from the Asian American Journalists Association. As we mentioned earlier, Lori helped co-found the organization. That's fun. So many friends so there. So proud of them. Yeah. They have done so much for this community. So we are nearing the end of tonight's show. Before we go, we have this special message. I don't know another person who's as smart as she is and yet as congenial and friendly and down to earth. And I, th I think she makes everybody feel down at an ordinary level instead of I'm the TV person and I'm just interviewing you. Just about two weeks after she started, Mount St. Helens erupted. And so she was sent to cover it. In all of the excitement, I remember one of the phone calls she made to mom 
and her comment was, I don't think I brought enough clothes for the three-day shoot. And that was probably the only time she was ever not fully prepared for a story. Since then, she's covered stories big and small, local, national, and international. And I really appreciate the fact that you viewers have welcomed her, embraced her, and supported her during her career. So from my family to yours, thank you and mahalo. You saw there was Jane Morimoto, Lori's sort of mainland mother, right? Mm -hmm. And dear friend. The second was, of course, Lori's sister, Leanne Voss, who still lives in Hawaii. And Lori, we have another surprise for you right now. We thought it would only be fitting to bring um, out this these two. What? for your final. Oh my goodness! Hurrah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Congratulations, Mom! <laughs> my son, oh, Alex! So this is Alex. My husband, Larry. husband, Larry. Oh my goodness! So Alex, what? this is the first time I've met you. I've heard this so much about you over the years. Nice Thank you so much for being here. This is a surprise! A oh big my surprise. gosh! <laughs> Alex, what was it like having a famous mom? I mean, we saw baby pictures of you earlier. What was that like as a kid? You know, what's, what, what's interesting is for, for me, mom was just my mom, and a great mom. And it took literally decades to realize the kind of impact that she was having on the community outside of just being around the home, and just being taken to daycare, and just being cooked delicious meals. Um, it's, it's taken this long to realize how much more was going on, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the time. Just my mom. You know, and his all. friends too. His friends, you know, would come over and Larry and Lori were just like mom and dad and yeah. we're going to Alex's house and they would just barge in, grab Cokes out of the fridge and make themselves at home. You know, no big deal. Wow. So she found a way to be an incredible mom despite the fact that she had such a demanding job here. Indeed. Uh, I think there was, there was a resourcefulness that, again, like took a really long time to realize. Um, before there was a proper daycare program, uh, the news truck would pick me up. It was, it was a, a, a live truck or a satellite truck or We're something. We're probably going to hear from OSHA about that. <laughs> yeah. this, this is back when you could get away with that. You, know? you, could, you could still do that back then. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. off I would go to, to the live shot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was fun for me. Uh, it probably was a little bit stressful for mom. Right. Sometimes but, you, he would you know. play. Remember, you would play live yeah. shot. He would set up a light umbrella oh, and then the awesome. tripod and pretend he was doing a live shot. But, uh, you know, it was, it was her good sense that, like, this is not going to uh, cause a problem of any sort. It's going to solve two problems at once. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Like, that, that kind of intuition <laughs> just took a really long time for me to really appreciate That's fully. Crazy. Oh, crazy. Awesome. Larry, I have to bring you into this. Yes. Um, you are the other half of, of Lori's life. And, you know, I some, sometimes think we forget the sacrifice that families behind the scenes, uh, you know, endure. Yeah, there's a lot of times where uh, we thought we were going to have a Saturday and we run off, uh, she runs off because there's a big story, or uh, even vacations, but it's really worth it because the work she's doing, um, the, the community deserves it, and uh, I know that something would be taken away from her if she didn't go and get that story when a big one happens. Mm -hmm. There were at least three vacations, right? When we, we did the avocado story, we did the fake missile attack story, and we did the, the ship in Turkey the that avocado, was attacked by terrorists. I, but I got to be the, the uh, photographer in the <laughs> avocado, you know, with video photography. So uh, well, it was an easy task for me. It's, you guys are evidence that, that you have a wonderful family, and, and uh, we're so proud that you're here and that this Thank woman you. is at the center of it. Laurie, thing. before we go, this is your final chance to, to say farewell to all okay. of those wow. families who've wow. been watching you. Well, for all of those who've been asking, no, I can't believe I'll be retired from King 5 come 11.35 p.m. today. It's been an amazing 36 years of learning and growing and sharing. When I decided to be a journalist, I wanted a job where I could talk to people and learn something new every day, and television journalism provided that in spades. I want to thank Tegna, King Five, and all my colleagues here who've helped me realize that dream. For me, it's always been about providing information and inspiration to our viewers. Information they can use to make good choices for themselves. Inspiration to keep them moving forward. Ours is the only occupation specifically protected by the U.S. Constitution. It is that important to the survival of our democracy. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. And a word about local journalism. You can only get it from local journalists. So support your local media outlets by subscribing and supporting their advertisers. Finally, 
there is a Japanese expression, okage sama de. It roughly translates, I am who I am because of you. I stand on the shoulders of those who came before me to every teacher, mentor, and role model I've ever had. Thank you. I leave tonight with profound gratitude. It's been a profound honor working with you, my friend. Thank you. Enjoy your retirement. It's been great. Alex, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, you guys, for being here. And that's a wrap, as they say. Oh, we're going to a hooky lao. A hooky, 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 hooky lao. Everybody loves a hooky lao.